$1,500 to $2,000, which sounds pretty tempting to me. I want to talk to you about something very exciting, sports memorabilia in the world of antiques and vintage. You probably know it's always very big news, but I want to show you a real rare find that sold very recently in California, of all places, and it is, we believe, the earliest depiction, three-dimensional depiction of a cricketer. Yes, a cricketer, just feast your eyes, it's white marble. It's stunning. He's three foot tall, three foot one, made in the late 18th century. And you can tell this, look at his dress. He's dressed like a circa 1790 gentleman playing cricket. And look at the ball. Can you see the seam down the middle of that ball? As an ex-school cricketer, I know the importance of that seam for making the ball twist through the air and crucially to spin it just right. So when it hits the ground, it kicks left, right, up, down, whatever you want that ball to do. Cricket is a, is a big sport. And so the demand for this thing was, was absolutely huge. And the reason why it's so big, like all sports are, are, are big, I think it's because of the that kind of common cohesion sport brings. And cricket was, was known for this. It was England's national sport in the 18th and 19th century. And during the time of the empire, the British empire, the building of the empire, cricket was used as a tool for bringing this cohesion in the colonies. So the British would play cricket wherever they were, no matter how hot it was. India, Australia, Africa, Canada, America even. And it would be a way of making them feel British wherever they were in the world. But not just that, the British believed that a good cricketer was as good as an academic. And so, and they were, they were ideal for the foreign service. It's because if you were a good cricketer, you were a team player, you knew about rules, gentlemanly behavior, and, and you would spread the British way, the democracy and the British way of life throughout the world, the empire, and you would use cricket to do that. So you play with the locals. Now think about this. The empire, of course, became the Commonwealth and some of the best cricketers on the planet are the Indians, the Australians, the New Zealanders, the South Africans, all part of the old British empire. So the locals, wherever the British went, really took to cricket and bizarrely often played it far better than the British. So that's a very interesting story. I mean, the story of cricket, in fact, he's a ruthless plug, I know you're gonna to have to forgive me, is in my recent history book, A Bash with the British Empire. And there's all sorts of stories about sport in there, snooker included, which is a fascinating one. You can buy that on Amazon. But back to this sculpture. So yeah, sold in California in an auction, had an estimate of 1,500, to $2,000, which sounds pretty tempting to me. It was sold to a, a London buyer, so it's coming back to Britain. It was probably made in England, it may be possibly Italy, because at the time in the 18th century, the, the rich would do a grand tour of Europe and often have marbles carved whilst away. But it's definitely screaming, screaming English. Even though he's got a real classical look, hasn't he? Romanesque, Greek, even, which of course was very fashionable at the time, copying the ancient marble carvers. So remember, anything sport related is good news. Bats, balls, signed t-shirts, whatever it may be, sport is an international language and the world of collectors absolutely gobble it all up. Just like the buyer of this sculpture, remember, Estimated at $1,500 to $2,000, it sold to London for $30,000.